though I usually review horror flicks in October, but this one I want to try to make up for lost time since it came out earlier this year. Last month, I watched it for the first time, and I just re-watched it not so long ago, and that was the new Scream, which came out earlier this year. Yep, Ghostface is back. But is this fifth installment anywhere as good as, as maybe its predecessors, or maybe t one or two, maybe? Or have they run completely out of ideas in making new types of ways to connect things to the ghost face killer or something like that? Watch this special spoiler free review and you'll see. PTs, entertainment rankings, and reviews. So, greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a special spoiler-free review of the recent hit 2022 slasher, Scream, which would originally be should have been Scream 5, released by Paramount and directed by Matt Benelli, Alpen, and Tyler Gillett. Ran by James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick. Now, though billed as a relaunch of the film series, this is an actual direct sequel to Scream 4, and the first film not to be directed by Wes Craven, who passed away in 2015. However, the film is dedicated in memory of him at the beginning of the closing credits. The film stars Melissa Barrera, Kyle Gallner, Mason Gooding, Mikey Madison, Dylan Minnette, Jenna Ortega, Jack Quaid, Jasmine Savoy Brown, and Sonia Amar, alongside some of the people we've seen from previous installments, including Marley Shelton, Skeet Ulrich, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and Ev Campbell, plus Roger L. Jackson as the voice of Ghostface. Now, the film takes place 25 years after the original Woodsboro murders. When yet another ghost face appears and begins targeting a group of teenagers who are each somehow linked to the original killings. Now it's similar to the previous entries, it combines the violence of the slasher genre with elements of black comedy and whodunit mysteries to satirize the trend of reboots and legacy sequels. The film also provides commentary on the horror fandom culture, particularly the divide between elevated horror and classic slasher films. Yes. Now, although, well, 5th and 6th and Thomas were discussed after Scream 4 in 2011, well, writer Kevin Craven, along with writer Kevin Williams and executive producer Harvey Weinstein, who, which his Dimension Films had produced the first four films, had doubts about proceeding with more films following the less than expected box office performance of the fourth film. So, and soon the rights is, and after the Weinstein Company closed down, the Scream franchise was obtained by Spyglass Media Group, which of course they teamed with Paramount to give us this. Anyway, yeah. But anyway, now before I go into this, even though it's not a spoiler, even though this is spoiler free, if you haven't seen my reviews for the first. Four screen films, click on that card, it'll take you to the playlist. In case you might have missed the first four movies, or if you would like to see these reviews again before you go into before I go into this. Now again, this will not be completely spoiled, so it's mostly gonna be spoiler free. Now now we focus on Tara Carpenter, who is attacked by Ghostface and left hospitalized, and her estranged older sister, Sam, is informed by one of her friends, Wes, about the attack. She returns to Woodsboro with her friend Richie to visit. And there she meets some others. And well, I'm going to tell you... And some of these people are actually connected to being um, actual, well, 
to well connected to the characters we've seen in previous films in my view. But I will not spoil those. However, you're just gonna have to see the movie. But anyway, yeah. Well, from wives. But anyway, Ghostface has returned and is attacking teenagers again. But anyway, what I've seen in the film, after I watched it for the first time last month, I thought it was reasonable. And after watching it again just more recently, I watched it on Paramount Plus. And, well, I'm going to say, after rewatching it, it was better. But still, I don't think it's as great as the first one or even the second one. The first two screen films were definitely classics. Three was okay and what have you, and so was four. But this one, I think, comes right, kind of surpasses four and three, though. But you don't have to take my word for it. You be the judge. But anyway, I was really surprised by some of this in my view. I even was surprised they brought um, Skeet Ulrich back as Billy Loomis. But the original, kill one of the original killers from the first film... But as a hallucination. But anyway, and of course, Nev Campbell's back as Sydney Prescott, definitely just as good as she was before. Courtney Cox back as Gail Weathers, very good performance. And David Arquette as Dew Dewey Riley was good as well. Anyway, Melissa Barrera plays Sam, she's really good. Jack Quaid plays Richie. And let's see, now Mikey Madison plays Amber Freeman, another one of Tara's best friends. Jenna Ortega, who I, who also last month I saw in another recent horror film, and that was the film X, which I will do a review of possibly next month in order to promote the release of Pearl, maybe. Let's see. Dylan Minnette plays Wes, who happens to be the son of... Sheriff Judy Hicks, once again played by Marley Shelton. Jasmine Savoy Brown plays Mindy Meeks Martin. And Mason Gunn plays her twin, Chad. Let's see here. Sonia Mar plays Chad's girlfriend, Liv McKenzie. Kyle Gellner plays Vince Schneider. But anyway, I really won't give you too much info and what have you. And, and of course, we have Roger L. Jackson back as the voice of Ghostface. So anyway, yeah, the cast wasn't too bad. And this was the first time we didn't have Marco Beltrami doing the score. They brought Brian Tyler in to do the score. And his score wasn't too bad. Anyway, now as for the kills, though, I think most of them were pretty bloody and, well, not bad. They were a little bit of a step up from number three or even the fourth one. But, but again, you don't have to take my word for it. I will say that that um, the critical response from it wasn't too bad, and why have you? Ryan Tomeo says that it finds that this finds the franchise working harder than ever to maintain its meta edge and exceedingly surprisingly often. Well, I do agree. It is in a way meta in ways. <coughs> Excuse me, but even so. Uh, at least, I think it kind of is a uh, kind of a requel, a, a mix of reboot and sequel. So, it kind of comes close to me as good as Halloween 2018 and its follow-up Halloween Kills. But anyway, yeah. Not too bad. Now, I've heard there is to be a... Yet, there is a yet-to-be-tiled 6-1 in the works. It was already announced after the film was released, and it will be coming out next March. And Melissa Barrera, Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gillian, and Janet Ortega would, would return. The following day was announced that Hayden Pantier would reprise her role of Kirby from the fourth film. Thought she was killed, but it seems she survived. 
However, Nev Campbell announced she would not be reprising her role at Sydney, saying she that she felt that offer that the offer that was presented to me to her did not e equate to the value she had brought to the franchise. Now, I'm an understanding person, and well, that's fine. I mean, I know a lot of you might feel disappointed. I'm kind of a little sad by this, but well, just gotta look on. So anyway, Scream 2022, it's not bad. It is a good good slasher. I'm going to say it's definitely worth looking into. So anyway, since it was a recent film, I have given it a score for it. For my score for Scream 2022, I'm giving it four stars, which will mean on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Yeah, that would do it all right. So anyway, what are your thoughts on Scream 2022? Please tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And next time, I'll be bringing to you the next Wide World of Game Shows episode, and it's on Double Dare. No, not the Alex Trebek game from the 70s. I'm talking the Nickelodeon game. Okay? So anyway, that's going to do it. If you like this, then check out some of these other reviews. Here's the two I've recently mentioned that were kind of requels and what have you. The upper left-hand corner is my review of Halloween 2018. The upper right-hand corner, well, actually, um, the Halloween 2018, that's it, which will, which is actually a re-review of the film. In the upper left-hand corner, you know, I'm getting tongue-tied. Upper right-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of the recent film Halloween Kills. I hope for the best Halloween ends turned out to be good. Or if you would like, go to the bottom left hand corner and see my review for a, another recent um, horror film that Paramount had given us. And that was A Quiet Place Part 2 from last year. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.